Hello fellow Python programmers. Welcome to Lesson 6 Dictionaries in my free course called Python Essentials at pythonbeginners.com. So in Lesson 6 we talk about this thing called a dictionary. And the best way I can describe a dictionary to people who don't know what they are is to say think of a dictionary as a variable with lots of properties and settings attached to those properties. So for example, say I wanted to create a book variable. I'm going to just say book equals two curly braces. All right, that's different than saying book equals two square braces. If I did this, I was going to create a list of books, or I'm going to. With curly braces, I'm creating what's called a book object. So if I just press enter, I've now got a book object. Well, what does that mean? That means I can start assigning properties to this book, and each property contains a little piece of data about that book. So for example, say I wanted to store the title of the book. I can go like this, book, square bracket, title, so the property goes in quotes, equals whatever I want to give as the title of the book. So I'm going to call this to sir with love. All right, and at the same time, why don't we assign an author? So I'm going to go book author equals, and the author of this book is a person by the name of Braithwaite. And I had to look that up. I didn't know that off the top of my head. So now I've got this book variable that contains an author and a title. All right, now we could start with an empty object and build the properties one at a time like that. But a more typical way of doing this is to assign the properties as you create the object. So fasten your seatbelts. We're going to redefine this book with title and author along with a bunch of other properties. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say let book equal an object, but I'm going to open this up a little bit. Okay, maybe I'll try that again. <laughs> book equals, I'll just do one brace this time, and I'll press enter a few times. There we go. That's what I want to do. Okay, so now I've got this gap in between here where I can start listing the properties that I want to use. So, for example, I'm going to put the first two in again. So I'm going to go title, colon, and for now I'm not going to assign these properties. I'm just going to get a list of them going here. So I've got author, colon. Uh, some more properties that I would like to use would be things like maybe I want a book rating to see how people like this book. Maybe I also want the year that the book was published. So I'll put that in as well. Uh, maybe I want the price of the book because I'm going to sell these in a bookstore. And I'll finish off with one more variable, or one more property rather, called in stock. All right, now uh, there's the end of my brace, so that would be the end of my object. Now I'm not going to press enter yet because this will give me an error. I've still got to go back and assign each of these properties. So for example, the first one again is to sir with love. Okay, and now going on to the next property, I've got to use a comma to tell Python there's more properties to come. Okay, and then brace wait. I hope I'm spelling his name right. Rating, I'm going to just give a rating of 5, just an arbitrary number. For published, I know for a fact, because I had to look this up as well, it was published in 1967. Uh, the price, I'm going to say, is $12.99. And currently, the book is in stock, so I'm going to say true. Now, before I press enter, just want to remind you, we need to put commas at the end of each of these properties, because we're telling Python there's more properties to follow except for the last one, because this is my last property, and I'm going to the end of my book definition. So now everything's good to go, and I can press Enter, and I now officially have a book variable with all of those properties. All right, so now that we have this book variable, what are some things we can do? Well, say I want to retrieve one of the properties, like title, for example. So I can go book, and you've seen this already before, but let me try a different one. Like maybe I want to do book author. So that's me retrieving the author. Now there's a different way we can do it that's a little bit of a different syntax but gives us the same result. So now I'm going to look up the book price. So I'm going to go like this, book, and I can use dot get as a command. And then I supply the name of the property I want right here. So that gets me the price. So two different ways to get the same thing. Now I'm not limited to um, the properties that I've already defined. So say I wanted to add another property or modify one of the properties. So let's say we've just sold our last copy of the book. So I want to set the in stock property to false. So that's as easy as going like this. 
book and then the property is in stock and I'm just going to reassign it to false. All right, so now if I verify my in stock property is false down here at the end. I can also still add properties if I want to. So say I wanted to keep track of how many books I have in stock. So maybe like a quantity variable or quantity property rather. So I'm going to go book quantity equals zero. All right, so now I've just introduced a new property to my book variable. And you can see it down here towards the end, quantity of zero. All right, now uh, another way of thinking of a dictionary object, and this is the official computer science definition, they say a, a dictionary is a set of key value pairs. So what do I mean by that? Well, if I type something like this, book.keys, I'm going to get a, a list of the properties. Okay, so when I say properties, in the world of computer science, they often use the word key. So a key is basically a property of the object. The other part of it is the value. So if I go book.values, I'm going to get the settings for each of those properties. So there you can see the settings in the same order that the properties were. So here you can see what we call our key value pairs. So we have these, these things called keys that each point to or pair up with a value. So author is, is paired up with Braithwaite, title is to serve with love, published 1967, and so on. Another thing worth noting is when you're defining a dictionary object like this, you can assign different types of properties or different types of values to your keys. So if you notice back up here where I first created this book object, some of these properties are strings like the author and the title. Uh, some are ints like rating and published. I can have a double thrown in there if I want to. I can even throw in a boolean. So I'm not limited to the kinds of information I can keep track of with my book. Um, a few other things we can do with this dictionary object would be things like uh, maybe I want to know whether or not a certain property is in my books. So say I wanted to know if I'm keeping track of the color. Okay, so I can do something like this. Color in books. So I'm asking a question. Is color a property I'm keeping track of or is color a key? And of course I'm going to get back false um, as soon as I type this out properly. So let me try that again. Uh, color in book is what I meant to say. So that's false. Am I keeping track of the price? So price in book. And I should get back a true because yes, price is a uh, property of the book. I can also go uh, len book and this is going to retrieve the number of properties I have. Okay, and I'm going to I'm going to save this one till the very end now. So if I wanted to clear out all my properties, I could go like this. book.clear. Okay, and that will erase all of my properties. But before I do that, um, I wanted to show you how to just erase a certain individual property. Okay, so say I wanted to get rid of um, the the rating. Okay, I'm no longer keeping track of the rating. So what I can do is I can say del book rating, just like that. So I, I specify the key in the, in the square brackets, and now rating is no longer something I'm keeping track of. Okay, so you can add properties, you can remove properties, you can change the settings of properties, you can find out how many you have, and the very last thing I'm going to do is book.clear. And what that did was basically erased all the data of my book. The book object is still there, but it's now an empty object again. So I don't have any properties, and I don't have any, any settings for properties. All right, so that's my first example. Let's take a look at another example. And you know I said earlier how you can keep track of different types of information. So you can have strings, ints, floats, booleans. You can also have a list within your dictionary object. So we learned about lists way back in lesson two. And if you are a little bit rusty on those, maybe go back and review what a list is. But it's essentially just a list of information. So for my next example, I'm going to create a person object. And I'm going to make it the same way that I made my book object. So I'm going to say person equals brace. And I'm going to press enter one, two, three, four, maybe five times just to be safe. Uh, so that leaves me room in the middle here to add the properties or the keys that I want to assign values to. So I'm going to use name as a property or a key, uh, whichever way you want to call it. 
I'll use gender as a property. I gotta spell it right though. I actually prefer using the word property to key. It makes more sense to me. Um, I'm gonna have an age property. And here's where things get a little bit different. I'm gonna have a property called hobbies. And when I go to fill these out, you'll see that hobbies is going to be a list of things. All right, so come back up to the top here. And my name of my friend is Joey Smith, we'll say. All right, now I gotta use a comma because I'm going on to another property. And gender is going to be M for male. His age will be uh, 29. And for the hobbies, here's what I can do. I can actually put in a list of hobbies. So this one property represents a list. So let's say that Joey likes hiking. He likes biking and he likes computer games. All right, so we're good to go. Here's my person object. As soon as I press enter here, I now have a person and I can type person and there we go. So um, you might notice that I messed up on the spelling of hiking here. So I can go back and I can reassign that if I want to, just like any other property. So I can go like this, person hiking. Make sure I spell that part right. Sorry, that should be person hobbies in square brackets and in quotes, like so. Equals, let's see if I can get it right this time. It's always hard on live mic to do these things. Biking and computer games. There, I think I fixed that up. All right, so now if I type my person object, there's all my properties. So how do, I, how do I get to, say, one of the hobbies? Well, you know I can go like this, right? Person hobbies, right? And that's going to return a list of their hobbies. But because hobbies is a list, I can even drill down further. So I can say, give me the second hobby, which, as you know, list being zero based, the second hobby will be biking. So if I press enter now, I get biking. Okay, so you can drill right down to bits of data within the list to get even more specific. Okay, so that's one way we can incorporate lists into an object. I'm going to show you, I'm going to finish off with a second example, and this time we're going to use a list to collect a list of objects. All right, so in the past you've learned about lists uh, for things like a list of numbers, a list of names. We can also use a list to, to keep track of a list of these dictionary objects. All right, so I'm going to have a list called friends. So I'm going to say friends equals bracket bracket. All right, so now I've got this empty list. Now I've already got a person that I can add to my list. So I'm going to go like this, friends dot add my person. And that didn't work because I used the wrong command. Let me try that again. Friends dot append person. Much better. So now if I type out friends, I have one person in my list. Okay, so I'm going to add a few other people to my list using the friends.append command. All right, um, but to save a little bit of time, I'm going to go to my website and I'm going to copy the, the data for each of these friends so we can get this list filled quickly. So back in the website, if I go to my dictionary lesson, and I'm going to scroll right down to the part where I'm talking about my list of friends. So here's the example that I'm dealing with here. So I'm going to copy this data here for a person, control C or command C on a Mac and go back to my idle shell and I'll paste that right in there. Okay, and I'll press enter. So now I have two friends. Okay, and they're, it's kind of an ugly output, but it's listed there uh, one after the other. Um, all right, so let me just grab a couple of more friends here. So I'm going to grab this one here. This is Jerry Springer. And we will go friends.append. And I'll paste them right in there. All right, and one more friend. Friends.append. And I'll come back here and I'll get my last friend. All right, 
and I'm just, I mean, you can see how I'm defining these dictionary objects one after another, all in the same line. So you can do that as well, rather than spread them out onto separate lines. And this is just to make it a little bit more compact. All right, but you can see the same property. So I've got name, gender, age, and a list of hobbies for each one. So now that I've got my list of friends, I'll just type that one more time. And you can sort of make out if you look closely uh, that I've got all the friends in there. Okay, and it's like I said, the output when you do it like that is a little bit ugly and a little bit hard to follow. Uh, so let's see if we can use a for loop to print out just the names of all of my friends. So I can go like this, for f in friends. This is a unique type of for loop where you can walk through a list one friend at a time and assign f to each individual friend. So inside of this for loop I'm going to say print I have a friend named plus f and the property I'm looking for is name. Alright, so that should do it. Okay, so you can see how it goes through the list and it gets each name. Now, a thing that gets a bit complicated is if you want to get, say, I don't know, Karen Green's second hobby. Okay, so if I go like this, friends at location three, okay, that's my friend Karen Green. If I wanted to drill in to get her second hobby, which is hobbies location one, which is singing, I would go like this. I'd say friends three hobbies. Okay, and then I'm going to go even further and put in a one. So I'm saying, give me the third friend's hobbies number one, or list item one, which is the second hobby. Okay, so that's how you have to drill right down through a list, through a, an object, and then through another list. So we can drill right down to the hobby of our third friend. All right, so let me finish off with just one more final example, kind of a, a variation of this for loop. So I'm going to go for F in friends. And this time around, I only want to print the ones that are female. All right, so then inside of here, I can use an if, and I can say if, and this time I'm going to use the get command, f dot get gender equals equals the letter f for female. Then I'm going to just print that name. So I'm going to say print. F and I'll use the other way of doing it, which is just to spell the property out in square brackets like that. All right, so before I let this run, I'm using a for loop to travel through my friends list. Um, if each individual friend represented by F, if I get their gender and I get back an F, which means female, then I want to print it. All right, so this should just print two of my friends. Let me see if this works. And there we go. So if you look at my original list, uh, which I created way up here, um, you'll notice that two of my friends, actually I'll come back here, you can see it a little bit better. So I've got Leslie Nope, whose gender is female, and Karen Green, who's female. The other two, Jerry Springer and my original friend, are both M male, so they aren't included in this list. All right, But using a list, it's a great way to collect a bunch of these dictionary objects. And then with that, you can use a for loop, go to each object, and then you can zero in on a property and decide what you want to do, like whether you want to print or, or whatever you want to do. So that's just a brief introduction to dictionaries. Uh, we're going to use them a lot more in detail in a future lesson when we work with data files. But I think that's enough to sort of give you a, an overview of how a dictionary works. So it's basically just an object with key value pairs, or another way of saying it is an object with properties and settings to those properties. And you saw how we can use a list for our objects or our dictionaries. And you saw how we can use um, a list within a dictionary item. Alright, so until next time, this is John from pythonbeginners.com. Thank you for watching.